Hey, what's going on everyone? So in this episode, we're gonna take that teddy bear character that we created in episode six in Daz 3D, and we're gonna bring it into Unreal Engine and get it working with our Rococo motion capture. So there are a couple ways to get the 52 blend shapes that we're gonna need for this workflow. One of which is by using Lalo 3D's plugins on the Daz store. However, his plugins can be a little expensive and they require a bit of elbow grease to get working properly. Instead, we're gonna be using the new Daz 3D Bridge workflow, which allows us to add the blend shapes for free natively within Daz Studio. However, this really only works in Unreal, so we won't be covering the Unity workflow. If you want to use the Daz 3D characters in Unity, we'll have links in the resource doc that will help you get there using the Lalo 3D plugins. With that being said, let's jump into it. So for this workflow, you'll need a couple things. One, you're going to need to install the Daz Bridge for Unreal. We have links to the Bridge site and tutorial in the description below, and you can install the Daz Bridge from Daz Central. The other thing you'll need is our Unreal Rococo Assets folder, the download for which is in the description. Finally, you'll need to install the Rococo Live plugin, which for Unreal 4.26 can be found in the marketplace. We also have plugins for 4.27 and 5, but for this workflow, 4.26 is the most stable, so that's what we'll be using. Let's go ahead and open up a new project. Once we have Unreal open, we can go ahead and add our Rococo Assets folder by dragging it into the content folder of our Unreal project. Then back in Unreal, we can go to Edit, Plugins, and search for Rococo to enable our Rococo Live plugin. Then search for Daz and enable our Daz Bridge plugin. You'll be prompted to restart. And now that everything is enabled, we're ready to get our character into Unreal. So let's open up Daz Studio to our teddy bear character we made in episode six. Remember, this is a Daz Gen 8.1 male with the Daz Gen 8 teddy bear morph applied to it. This is important because only the Gen 8.1 figures have access to the AR kit blend shapes. With our bear selected, we'll go to File, Send to Unreal. Here we can name our bear, but more importantly, we want to make sure this Enable Morphs checkbox is ticked. Then we'll click Choose Morphs, and if we go down here and just select AR Kit Genesis 8.1 Morphs, boom! Now we've assigned all the blend shapes we'll need for our character. Hit Accept, and then let the character finish exporting. When it does, if you jump back into Unreal, you'll see that our character is being loaded into the project. When that finishes, the first thing that we'll do is double click our teddy bear and then open up the blueprint. We're actually going to ignore the rest of these nodes and we're just gonna add our Rococo mocap nodes right to the output pose. We'll throw down a Rococo body pose node and a face pose node. We'll enter the actor profile name we're using in Rococo Studio. In this case, it's Sam, and I'll point this out again when we jump into Rococo Studio. Then we'll select the body pose node and add a Daz Gen 8 bone list from the dropdown. This is one of the files in that Rococo Assets folder we added earlier. Then we'll select the face, and under Retarget Asset, we're going to select the Gen 8.1 AR Kit mapping. Then we'll compile and save. If you have issues with not being able to add the AR kit mapping asset, sometimes you actually need to go into the asset and just compile and save it again, and then you should be able to add it just fine to that face node. Before we get our mocap going, however, we also need to solve this A pose issue. So Daz characters can be a little bit tricky with this, but our solution is to add two bone modify nodes for both the left and the right upper arms. After they're added, we'll select both of them, and under Rotation, we will select Add to Existing and Bone Space.
Then we'll enter the values of x equals negative 20, z equals negative 90 on the left arm, and x equals negative 50, y 20, z 45 for the right arm. Because this model is fairly non-humanoid, you might need to tweak these values for whatever character you're using if the arms look funky when you start streaming your mocap. We'll hit compile and save. And so now we want to add this blueprint into our scene. But where is it? Because it's not with our model. Well, it's actually not in the content folder. So we need to search the project for DAZ. And then under DAZ to Unreal Content, you can see the actual bare blueprint. This is what we want to add to our scene. We'll add our bear and center it. And then we'll add a Rococo receiver to the scene. At this point, we're ready to jump into Rococo Studio and get our mocap streaming over to our character. Okay, so here we are in Rococo Studio, and as you can see, I've already gotten my SmartSuit Pro 2, my smart gloves, and my facial motion capture already all set up. If you want to see how we did that, you can jump back to episode 3, where we covered that in detail. So the first thing you'll notice is that I have treadmill mode enabled in Rococo Studio. You can enable that right up here in the live filters location. And what that means is that even if I move around, my character is not going to translate in space, right? And this will keep my character in the same location so it doesn't wander away from the camera if I get up and move while I'm VTubing. The other thing you'll notice is that Sam right here is the actor profile name that we're using. And uh, this is the same name that we entered into the blueprint earlier. So in order to get my mocap over to Unreal, I'll go to Start Live Stream, and I'm going to tick this Unreal Engine box. And immediately you can see that we are going to be streaming out to this IP and to port 14045. So that's what we want to match the Rococo receiver that's in Unreal. So at this point, let's jump back into Unreal and we'll get everything connected. So we already have a Rococo receiver in the scene and you can see 14045 is that uh, port number that we just saw in Rococo Studio. Now we can just go up to Window, Live Link, and then add our Rococo Studio source. And you should see these two. If you don't see two, you can just trash it and add it back and you should see both of those. And now, if we just click on our bear here, we can either enter play mode or we can just hit update animation in editor. And as soon as we check that, as you can see, we've got everything up and running. So let me turn down my camera speed here a little bit. And yeah, here we go. We got our bear up and running and uh, as you can see, we might want to tweak some of the arm positions a little bit, um, but this actually looks pretty good to me. And the cool thing is we can always trigger a straight pose by just hitting it on our iPhone here. We, ha we have a little API. So if I hit that, do my straight pose. There we go. We've just done a quick little calibration. So these Daz characters are, are great. I just like the fact that there are so many non-human options and they still work really well um, with the facial motion capture. And I think this would be a hilarious character to be using for VTubing. Okay, but if we wanted to port this out, you know, for actual VTubing, we want to add a simple green screen to the scene. So I'm just going to add a typical plane here drop it in our scene. I'm going to scale it up, rotate it 90 degrees. Let me move it back a little bit more. And then I'm just going to create a new material. Call it green. If we jump into that, we can assign a constant three vector to the base color. And then we can click into here in constant and just go find a very green color. So this is going to be our green screen color, right? We can always tweak this later if it isn't green enough. 
So we'll add that to our plane and then maybe we'll just add a little camera here if we pilot it we can go and <laughs> get our bear into frame and maybe we'll just uh, change the focus settings to get our bear into frame here And there we go. We're all set up, streaming our mocap out, and we're ready to send this out to OBS for streaming. So the other thing that we can do is if we click this little button up here, we can actually undock this viewport, and now we just have something that's a little bit more nimble that we can move around with. As you can see, this is super lag free. Everything looks good and we can do karate kicks. And again, we could always go back into the blueprint and tweak that arm position if it was, you know, we wanted to make a few changes. But this actually looks pretty good, I think. So that covers how to get your Rococo motion capture out and streaming to your Daz 3D character in Unreal. Again, if you want to use your Daz 3D character in Unity, we'll have links in the resource doc and in the description below that should help you get there. But it's just a little bit more of a complicated process. In the next episode, we're going to be running through how to take our avatars and bring them into OBS, key out our green screens, and finally get them streaming out to your favorite streaming platform. Join us.